Are you looking for a deck that's cheap, fun, and packs a powerful tribal punch? Well then shamble on down to your local game store because have I got a deck for you. Popper Zombies. Costing only $13 to build, Popper Zombies offers a fun tribal strategy that approaches the metagame from a slightly different angle than other black and aggro decks. Zombies is resilient. While not the fastest deck, as it is firmly in the mid-range camp, it can recover from removal rather easily. What's more, Zombies thrives in metagames rife with creature decks. It can take them out rather effectively while also establishing a board state, where your shepherds and polluters will win the game in short order. If you're looking for something different and something that is sure to get new cards every few years, while already fully upgraded, ready to play, and never rotating out, then look no further, because zombies are here with a shout. Let's take a look. Most aggro decks these days need to have large threats to get past Augur of Bolas. Zombies gets to sidestep this need by running a pair of fireballs in the form of Shepherd of Rot and Gem Palm Polluter. As such, the game plan is to get the opponent's life total down early before taking over the game with your very own burn spells. Shepherd of Rot is one of the best reasons to run this deck, and amazingly, the card is only 25 cents each. For one in a black, you get a 1-1 zombie cleric that you can tap to have each player lose life for each zombie on the battlefield. Now before you shout out that this is a reverse well-wisher, note that it's symmetrical, meaning it is going to put a hurt on both players. The goal, therefore, is to get ahead and then start activating Shepard in order to end the game in short order. The Rot Father is risky, but the payoff is high. This is how we get through clogged up boards. We don't. When the game stalls out, instead of gaining life like those stupid elves, we do something that actually wins us the game, cause our opponents to lose life. Along those lines, we also run three gem palm polluters. A 4-3 zombie for five and a black, we're really going to use this as a dirty fireball when we cycle it. Cycling costs two black, and of course lets us discard this card to draw a card. But when we cycle gem palm polluter, we may have target player lose life equal to the number of zombies on the battlefield. Polluter will often fire off for three and four damage and lets you see a new card. That's not bad at all. Sometimes you'll have to cycle it early for no value, but we have recursion in this deck, which I'll cover in just a moment. In the worst case scenario, hard cast it for a four power creature that can attack rather well. But even this scenario is fine since it turns on your Ghoul Razors, which we run three of. Ghoul Razor is a 15 cent card, which for one and two black, we get a 2-2 zombie. When Ghoul Razor enters the battlefield, return a zombie card at random random from your graveyard to your hand. Now never mind the word random. This is a 2-2 that is on tribe that draws you a card when it enters the battlefield. That's pretty good. Ghoul Razor helps to keep the deck moving forward, and the random recursion is hardly a downside since the deck has so many redundant pieces. Yeah, it's random, and maybe you'll really want to recur a gem palm, and sometimes you won't, but most of what you're grabbing is going to be great fuel anyway. And amazingly, that same recursion can grab our three nameless inversion. It's the Inversion Recursion. Nameless Inversion is a tribal instant with Changeling, which means that spells that care about zombie care about this. For one in a black, this 15 cent card gives target creature plus three, negative three, and that creature loses all creature types until end of turn. While not the best removal spell in the format, the ability to get it back with cards that care about zombies makes it a viable option. Nameless Inversion will handle most threats in the format and in a pinch can be paired with Carrion Feeder to add three damage on an attack. Carrion Feeder is another 20 set card that we run three of. Feeder is a 1-1 one, one for black that can't block, but we can sacrifice a creature to put a plus one plus one counter on Carrion Feeder. One of the strengths of this deck is its ability to use the graveyard as a resource. Getting creatures into the graveyard helps to generate value and make Carrion Feeder large. Feeder turns on cards like Festering Mummy and Shambling Goblin and helps you to draw cards with Sultai Emissary. It allows you to curate your Shepherd activations. And thus we run four Festering Mummy, two Shambling Goblins, and three Sultai Emissary. Did you know Delver of Secrets has one toughness? 
Tireless Tribe, Spell Stutter Sprite, almost every card in Elves. These cards allow you to trade up with two toughness creatures or pick off threats early in the game. They are powerful options that help keep you in the game early. Another 1-1 one, one for Black, when Shambling Goblin dies, target creature and opponent control gets negative one, negative one until end of turn. Similarly, Festering Mummy is a 1-1 one, one for Black, and when Festering Mummy dies, you may put a negative one, negative one counter on target creature. So imagine casting these, swinging when open, sacrificing to carry and feeder to grow it, all while removing opponent's creatures. Then recur with cards like Ghoul Razor to repeat all over again. The three Sultai Emissary, a 15 cent card, where for one in a black you get a 1-1 one, one zombie with when Sultai Emissary dies, manifest the top card of your library, which means you put that card onto the battlefield face down as a 2-2 creature. Turn it face up at any time for its mana cost if it's a creature card. Think of it this way, basically it dies into a 2-2 and is a zombie. What's not to love? To be cheeky, we run one gnawing zombie, another sacrifice outlet that blocks rather well and only 10 cents each. A 1-3 zombie for one in black, we can spend one in black to sacrifice a creature and target player loses one life and you gain one life. Nine zombie can help to put us ahead on life while also sacrificing creatures to fill out graveyard and helping to enable shepherd kills. We also run one infernal caretaker, a late game card for sure, but only 15 cents. Caretaker is three in black for a 2-2 cleric. Its morph cost is three in a black, which means we can cast this card face down as a 2-2 creature for three mana and then turn it up anytime for its morph cost. When infernal caretaker is turned face up, return all zombie cards from all graveyards to their own hands. The ability to draw five or more cards for free for only about four mana is great. Once this turns face up, you can bury your opponent under a writhing mass of zombies. It also works rather nicely with Sultai Emissary since you can manifest it and turn it face up for its morph cost. Caretaker can be backbreaking as it returns an unbound number of zombies from graveyards to hands. Just watch out, it will do the same to your opponent's zombies as well. And we're in mono black, so two Garys are going in the deck. Grey Merchant ends game. Games. Not much else to say here. He's Gary. Gary can put your life total high enough to start going to town with the Shepherd, and of course helps the Fireball plan. We also want to run two Tragic Slip because creatures are going to die a lot, so let's take great advantage of that. Might as well let them kill something on the way out. Our other removal will be two Geth's Verdict for non-targeted removal, which is vital and pauper. Not to mention a pair of Sign and Blood for a card draw. Next up is something very important. Two Ghoul Callers Chant and one Cemetery Recruitment. Each of of these are draw twos in an ideal world. Chant lets you get back Nameless Inversion and something else, while Recruitment gets you any creature card and, unless you're getting back Caretaker, a fresh card. Who says blue gets to have all the fun? Gravedigger used to be a staple in Pauper, but as the format sped up, it fell out of favor. Shaving a mana off the total cost while increasing devotion for Grey Merchant of Asphodel makes the card strong enough to see play. Mono black mana base is great, it's just 20 swamps and two barren more. More. What more do you need? Sideboard as always has a lot of great options, but especially in this meta, we can have some fun. We run two Combi Witches. Elves and Delvers should cower before these witches. They are especially nice here since if they ping a mummy or a goblin, you can come out ahead. We'll also want to run three Duress for when we need to strip key spells from our opponent's hands, and three Choking Sands because Tron is a thing. Choke it out. And I like to run a pair of Two Wrench Mind for when you want to supplement Duress. A pair of Oblivion Strike is a great one as well. It gets around protection from black rather nicely. And that's somewhat required these days with so much heroic running around. Finally, two Gutless Ghouls and one Silvok Life Staff for burn and other matches where you need to manage your life total. Keep it high or go low. Either way, these are some really fun tools to play with. In Popper, Zombies is still underground, pun intended, and a great surprise to crawl up on your opponent. The price is super low now at only about $13 for the whole deck, and it never rotates. It's fully upgraded. I mean, I guess you could go for a Chainer's Edict instead of Geth's Verdict if you've got another couple dollars, but either way, you don't need to break the bank if you want to play Popper today. And I hope very much to see you later this week in Seattle at Mox Boarding House's monthly Rags to Riches tournament. Every month, Mox Boarding House Seattle has an epic Popper tournament with huge prizes, and this month, I'll be there March 23rd through the 24th for both Friday Night Magic and Saturday Popper. Hope to see you there. And this video is brought to you by my and many other people's local game store, Card Kingdom, a brick and mortar pillar of this community.
as well as the Patreon support of viewers such as you. These are the people that keep Tolarian Community College going and growing strong. So thank you.